They're not. It's the little guys they don't care about. I've had this debate <laughs> with vegans. I had one last week. I have it every month. And I always point out, most vegans I know munch away on almonds and avocados and they turn a blind eye to the fact that this causes the mass murder of billions of bees, mainly in California. They don't want to have that debate because <laughs> they don't care about the little guys, Neil. <laughs> my, my, my only reaction there is... Um, that comment was addressing only vegans who are vegans because they don't want to kill animals. Yes, no, there I agree. Other reasons to be vegan. Of course. For health or the environment. No, no, I'm talking but specifically those who didn't want to kill... The ones who run into steakhouses is playing sounds of cows being slaughtered. They're the ones that munch avocados and almonds, invariably. Yeah, and by the way, and they are dining upon the reproductive organs of plants. That's yes. kind of weird. And I imagine if, if, an, if, a, if a plant-based alien visited Earth... They would freak out when they saw vegetarians yes. <laughs> because the vegetarians would be eating them, right? And 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 vegetarians target um, not only the reproductive organs, the nuts, the berries, the flowers, but they also target the infant versions of it, with baby lettuce, baby carrots, baby. Oh my this is, god! This would terrify a plant-based alien. So that's just a cosmic perspective on that. No, diet. no, you've I, given me. All. You have I, given I, me a whole new line of attack. The, the, the flower babies. I love it. This is fantastic. Uh, I, I, I just, they, I find these... That's, wait, that's dangerous. If, if It's dangerous to feed you more lines of attack because I don't know what you're going to do with it. No, but I always like to take these things to their... debates to their logical end, right? I mean, and it seems to me they, when it suits them, they care about the bigger animals, the cuddly ones, but when it comes to the little guys, they're not interested. Um now, I want to talk yeah, about the furry, the furry ones, especially something even more iconic, actually, than God or vegans. And it's your moustache, which has become one of the world's most famous moustaches. And here's the extraordinary. There's a whole website that's been set up called DeGrasse Tyson's Moustache. And <laughs> we did a bit of research ourselves, a bit of scientific research. Uh, and there's a, a, a moustache montage that we have here, which is quite extraordinary. It, it turns out almost every brilliant scientist has had a magnificent tash. Uh, Nikola Tesla, the inventor extraordinaire, oh. great tash. Louis de Broglie, the discovered the wave-like nature of all matter, great tash. Hans Geiger, famous for the Geiger counter. Robert H. Goddard built the first liquid-fueled uh, rocket. And, of course, Albert Einstein, probably the one nearest to your own. Um, you, I mean, you've become the modern-day godfather of science moustaches, but very much <laughs> running in a sort of a, a great, long, historic list of great tashes. I, 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 I never thought about it. Th this moustache, I've never shaved it in my life. Yes, I've trimmed it, but it's ever since I could grow a moustache... I've had a mustache, so uh, <laughs> it's just part of my life. And even it was kind of out of style a few years ago. And I, so I was a little bit, I did get rid of my mutton chop sideburns. <laughs> I figured, okay, that's from 1978. I could lose those, but I, I did keep the mustache. But if I were to vote among those mustaches, yes. I would say, you know, we remember Einstein as this wire haired, yes. you know, gray, big bushy eyebrows, but he, he was a dashing young man. He you was. see him in a tuxedo. Uh, yes, look at that mustache. That's like a Magnum PI mustache right there. If you could, final so, question, Neil, if you could have dinner tonight with any scientist in the history of recording mankind, who would it be? Yeah, it would be, oh, no question about it, Isaac Newton. But I think about that all the time, and I'd say, Isaac, come for dinner. And he'd look out the window, and he'd see these things moving. He said, what are those? And I'd say, well, they're horse-drawn carriages without a horse. He said, well, how do they move? Well, they use gasoline. What's gasoline? Oh, it's fossil fuels. What's fossil fuels? And after five minutes of this, i say, go back to where you came from. <laughs> also, unfortunately, your because answer... there's so much that has happened since then. Well, your answer is completely... I don't killed... know if I have the patience. Well, you killed my theory also, because Isaac Newton famously was clean shot. Oh, <laughs> well, um, Newton, we, we see him with these big locks of curls, but I think that was actually a wig on top of much shorter hair. Huh? And the statue of him in Cambridge, at the, in the, a tr Trinity in, a church in Cambridge, mm. um, it's, you, shoot, you see him with short hair. Wow. So I was so disappointed when I heard of that, yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> Neil, I could honestly interview you every single day and it would never get boring. You've got a fantastic way of bringing this stuff to life. To infinity and beyond, a journey of cosmic discovery. Neil deGrasse Tyson and Lindsay Walker. It's a number one New York Times bestseller, as all your books are. It's a fantastic reading. Great to have you back in Uncensored. Thank you.